so I want to just talk a little bit about how we really need good assessments to figure out what kids need the most. So we're taking the NWA, I'm going to try not to show any names, um, and I really like how this kind of has colors now and you can click on the name and it'll go to their student profile and look at that. Um, that's a good screener and everything. Uh, so we, there's some kids that are, especially in upper grades, that will fall in that low category every single time. <clears throat> it could be a wide range of things. Um, this particular student that I'm gonna look at right now, um, very commonly every year falls in that low percentile. So what did we do first? We did the diagnostic, we did that SIPS test. So did that really quick, no major concerns. There were the last page of the multi-syllable words. She made a few errors and all kids could definitely use more multi-syllable instruction, but that wasn't a concern. So where do we go next? So I took her out of class and I actually gave her the wrong um, test. I was thinking she was in fourth grade, but guess what? She's in fifth grade now. So I did that, and as I got started, I was thought, eh, I'm just going to go ahead and listen to her read. This time that you have, that I have, that teachers don't have, is so valuable. And I don't know how to solve that problem, but they're, the time to sit with a student and talk about things is so powerful, especially if they're not falling into a phonics screener, because that's fast. But other things, you got to really dig deeper. So I just, I don't know if we have a test in our current curriculum. I'm still kind of digging through it and learning as we implement it this year. But um, I just went with what I know. So I just used Acadians. So I gave her this fourth grade one and you can see where she's supposed to be at the end of fourth grade. So this is where she should have been, 115 words per minute, 98% accuracy with a 33 retail. Um, definitely making sense of what she's reading. And so the first story, uh, before I show the scores, I'll just show her what, show what she did first. So when we first started reading, um, actually I better, better go back here. You can see that she's very accurate. So we wanted 98% accuracy and there it is right there. 115 words per minute and She's got 106, 101, a little bit low, but it's, it's still in the hundreds, so that's good. 33 retail. Um, started out kind of slow. She might have been kind of tired. And actually, the first th time I tested her, I that was one of the things that she did was kind of messed up the retail a little bit. She started talking about the, something in the middle that happened and then kind of bounced around a little bit. Um, while she was reading too, she had some phrasing issues that she didn't quite go as smooth um, as I thought she would. She said, um, let me see. So I, I just wrote down, she mixed up a retail and then I, I told her how maybe what she could do is just make sure she starts from the beginning when she retells. So she may have done a little bit better due to that. Now. If I was using this for a real benchmark, I wouldn't be doing any coaching like that, but I definitely wanted to ask questions and dig a little deeper. So I recommended her to practice retelling and start from the beginning. I also wanted to ask her what kind of text structure or what kind of story this is, because what I found is kids that can recognize it right away, like if this one is water skiing, right away if they understand that it's nonfiction and it's kind of going in sequential order they seem to do a little bit better if it's like a fable and they recognize that it's a fable things like that they're kind of it, it helps their thinking as they're reading it um let's see so this this story right here i started to write down like little lines here that shows her phrasing because uh, that was a concern too so I was kind of thinking a little bit about the retelling and then also the phrasing. The retell was decent. And then we read this story and she made a few mistakes. 
here and there and her retail was pretty good um, but she had some confusion with some of the some of the words and some of the characters i think what she did was for this one is she wasn't sure who the character was if it was a person or if it was an animal and we went back and she wasn't sure what a shepherd was she didn't understand what a staff was so then i started thinking a little bit about vocabulary so that's when i stopped with her and started to talk to her a little bit about what to do if she runs into a word i wanted her to be able to realize and be thinking like uh, not quite sure what that word means and be able to look it up or ask somebody for it. So I had, I had my phone out, so I just kind of uh, looked up the word and it made sense, more sense to her and we did that. So we talked a little bit about phrases, we talked a little bit about vocabulary, and we talked about retelling. I started also to think a little bit about small group ideas. I started thinking about reciprocal teaching, some paragraph shrinking maybe. Um, for summarizing and retelling, and then click and clunk with for a vocabulary focus, just to get her to be get her to start thinking about the words in the story, making sure she's understanding um, those phrases before she moves on. So the next day, I did the fifth grade one, and you can see right here for the beginning of the year, the goal is 111 words, 98 percent um, accurate, and 33 retell. So this is how she panned out. So 111, she had 76 and 85. She made, lot, made, made some errors and only at 93%. I didn't bother doing the other one because I got all the information I needed from this. Um, she's, her comprehension is pretty good, um, but it was really, really clear that this had, we had some vocabulary issues here. Um, when she was retelling, kind of got in the way again though she was able the words that she knows like she knew asia and north america she remembered those and she included that in her retail so that was really cool she did she said vest for vast and then i asked her what vast was she didn't know so we looked it up um when we did the next one we um she made a few mistakes here and one of the major errors here was was this word right here instead of Add it. instead of altitude, she said attitude. And I thought that was just the perfect example of like, should, we should stop right there and look it up. As soon as we looked it up, she saw some examples. We talked about, we talked about using the word, we talked about writing the word to help her out. And she did really good. So I think I would start with vocabulary and you can do a lot of that in tier one instruction but also have her read a passage. Don't go over the vocabulary in small group with her. Really watch to see that she is realizing that she doesn't understand that word and she looks it up. Because I, I told her there's no way you can learn as many words as you need to know this year. You have to do it on your own. You're gonna learn a lot from your teacher, but you're, you're gonna need to do it on your own as well. And, um, the, the retelling would also help and maybe some phrasing. But um, other than that, you know, I think that would be the starting point. And then you would, you would progress monitor every so often um, and see how she's doing based on that. Hope this helps.